Hello and welcome to the channel. This is a well a, a deconstructed nine element uh, two meter Yagi uh, new acquisition and it's to uh, replace or complement the uh, the seven LE I've already got. Uh, it's an Innova Antennas Owl Ultra. Uh, here you can see a one inch boom and we've got solid rods for the elements. That's the dipole and uh, some attachments and fixes. That's the trombone ends for the dipole for tuning. Um, so this uh, is significantly longer than my uh, my current uh, Yagi uh, at uh, five meters. The uh, current one is three meters. So I think this is on the limit of what I'll be able to push up the uh, push up mast. So I'm going to start the build and uh, see how we get on. So here we're just attaching this um, end boom extension uh, with these stainless fittings, um, just in case of securing the nut and uh, tightening them up. So that's the uh, the extension joint up there, uh, and if we zoom out, I've made the uh, the two centre connections as a, a round bar in there. That's the uh, obviously the mast clamp, um, and that's the other end. It's looking quite big. Um, hopefully, it's still manageable. Um, so that's the one I'll use to break it down into half, um, and the, that one will be permanently on. So that. That is the longest length and that just just fits in the car. So next is to install the dipole. Um, there's two holes. That one's uh, connected to the boom. This one's insulated with this, this nylon rod. Uh, so basically that passes through there, is centered uh, on that nut. And then there's a hole there to fasten it on underneath uh, with, with one of these. So, just in case, putting that on and uh, following the instructions. So again, just following the instructions, we've got the uh, center of the dipole fixed, uh, the front element and the rear, and underneath, if we turn that over, uh, you can see the, uh, the two nuts. So you need to push a screwdriver in there just to jam that nut as you tighten the other side and uh, making note to keep these uh, extended nuts on top because that's where the, the coax is going to attach so they've got standoff nuts to just to raise this above the boom and then uh, we'll see the uh, the coax here and, and then split to feed the dipole so here we've got the uh, hose clamps in position on the end of the dipole with the trombone element this slides in and out for tuning uh, the instructions say if you've got the metal hose clamps as opposed to the plastic uh, clamps uh, keep the worm drive out the plane of the dipole so I've got them on the bottom uh, I'll tidy those up as well um, and it says um, it recommends 30 millimeter projection so from the end of that uh, dipole uh, straight to this outer edge so that's 30 mil and my experience in the past with my other inner, inner antennas is that this starting position has been spot on so uh, I've done this side, now uh, do the other side. So here we are with the uh, dipole in place, got the trombone elements on at both ends and uh, they are fixed at 30 mil extensions as per the instructions as a, as a good starting point. Uh, it's worth at this point just sighting along the antenna um, because these, uh, as well as sliding and out for tune, keep these uh, two dipole elements level. So if you uh, sight along, you can just twist them before you tighten the ends and just make sure with a flat and in plane. Um, so next thing is the uh, elements push fit. So now to fit the push fit elements, a solid bar, uh, plastic insulators on the boom. It can be a bit stiff at first, uh, but let's see if you support the other side. There we go. And there's marks there where you push to. There you go, so that's one in. Right, so I haven't got the boom joined together, but that gives you an idea of the size uh, with all the elements uh, pushed in. Uh, so it's now a case of fitting um, the coax into the dipole centre, uh, bringing it away from the boom with the chalk and running along the, the boom uh, down to the stub mast and um, tuning it in. Hopefully it's tuned okay first time. I'll also put together the 7LE and lay it alongside so we can see 
see for comparison purposes how big they are. So I just thought I'd show you my existing 2 meter 7, 7LE antenna. So here we've got the coax ferrite choke and then coax splits into a T and joins the dipole either side. You're making this as flat as possible, this T piece, not a Y, because that is effectively now part of the dipole. So you're trying to emulate that missing piece in the middle where the nylon is. Uh, and waterproofed with uh, liquid rubber. Same again on the 70 sems, coax choke. This boom design is slightly different with the V, uh, but you can see the coax split one way than the other and uh, suitably insulated. So that's what we're trying to achieve uh, on the new 9LE. Right, so we're back around the front ready to do some uh, solder work. So we've got some uh, Westflex 103 just to get from the dipole to the top of the stub mast. Um, uh, N female. Uh, these are, I'm not going to drop them because they'll break, these are type 43 cores. Uh, the inner diameter is just larger than 103 uh, but previous experience means I think I had to rub this down a little bit with some sandpaper, just a little bit to get those on. These type 43s are rated at about 200 uh, ohms impedance at 2 meters so I've got 5 in there and this will give me uh, a thousand ohms choking uh, on the coax. So that's what we're after. Uh, very careful of these, if you drop them, they will shatter. So don't. So going to bear off some coax, uh, form a, a T piece for the dipole, get the chokes on, measure it down to the stub mast, and then uh, fit an end female on either end. Well, that's a bonus. These are actually going on without sanding the coax down. There's a snug fit but once you get over that end there you go. So one on, four to go. So you can see I've got um, some ring connectors just loose on the top of the dipole connectors. Just put them on there. So it's a case of offering up You can see here, offering up the coax so you know uh, where you're going to cut. Um, so you can see there, the centre I'm going to cut there and there. See what I mean about this being a T as well, you want it flat. And uh, when you come to solder these, remember to keep them in the same plane, uh, otherwise you're going to have to twist them. So that's that's what we're going to do next. And there you can see, I've, if I zoom in, trim those uh, and they just need soldering but like I say when you take this off this ring connector is going to pivot so you need to keep it flat uh, ready for whatever angle you're going to have the corks coming off which is going to be straight up so that needs to be at a tangent to the corks leading so that you get the idea that, that it needs to tidy up but uh, just enough to get into the connectors now the coax is going to come away from the boom so I need to solder these connectors at 90 degrees uh, otherwise I'm going to be twisting the twisting the car so just remember that when you take this off the uh, off the boom for soldering. So there you can see I've, uh, I've slid the ferrets back a bit so I can get the crimping plies on crimp the uh, rings on uh, just need to solder those slide the ferret back down um, seal these with uh, self amalgamating tape and then once it's on the dipole, there'll be uh, liquid rubber applied as well. So here we are with one end completely uh, finished. We've got the ferrites all pushed on tightly together, so there's no gaps there taped on. Liberal amounts of self-amalgamating tape. If you've got normal width tape, cut it now with some scissors so you've got thin strips, and it's easy to go round and round and figure of eight over there and work your way to these, these ring connectors. Keep offering it up to the uh, dipole bolts just to check it's the same same spacing you haven't lost that um, and don't skimp on the amalgamated tape this as well as weatherproofing this end and the coax it uh, it builds up and provides support so this is quite solid now if this was if it skimped this might flex uh, and over time these these cores might break the the, the center of the braid uh, so it's good to to be liberal with the tape so it's a case of now putting this on the on the dipole uh, taking the choke away from the boom, running the coax along the boom, just so I know how long to, to trim this coax to, 
and then fit a fit a female end. So there you go. I've got a, a female end connected now. I need just need to seal that with self amalgamating tape. This is your chance to check you haven't got continuity between the core and the braid, uh, because once this is attached to the boom, the boom, uh, the dipole, sorry, the dipole shorted uh, to the boom. So just check your connections now, uh, because it'll look like a dead short once you once you connect it to the antenna. Right, so here we are outside. I've got it on the mast temporarily. No guys, just that single one to hold it. So we're at full height, uh, seven meters. Uh, there we go. So let's see if uh, the instructions were close. Uh, so we want to be two meters, so up, up, up. So we're looking for 144. I want the SSB end, so in the UK, that's the bottom end. We went past it. I'm looking at that dip, so where's that dip? Spot on 1443, so that's the centre of the call, the centre of the SSB section. 144300 is the calling frequency, so if we dip. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So if we go higher, 145. So if you're up in FM in the UK, 145, 5 is the calling frequency. So one and a half, but I won't be up there. 144. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I just need to put some liquid rubber on and uh, Make sure it's all sealed. So here, as I mentioned earlier, the 7LE Owl on the left, uh, Owl GT, and the 9LE Ultra on the on the right. So the one inch boom makes uh, quite a bit of difference. Uh, that stops droop on uh, on such a long long yagi. So fingers crossed. Uh, there's a, an increase in uh, performance.